Hi, my name's Daniel Platt. I love my iMacs, but they've been getting slow. Over the last few years, I've had a 2013 iMac and a 2015 iMac. The 2015 iMac was a bottom spec machine with a terabyte drive, whereas the 2013 was a high end spec. If it wasn't for the retina screen in the 2015 iMac, I would have stuck with the 2013 iMac. Both iMacs had one thing in common, one slow component, and that was the fusion drive. In the past, there were mechanical drives and they got larger and larger, but they were based on a spinning disk and that was slow to access files, especially when these files were randomly placed around the drive. Then we started to get SSDs, which were made up of chips, and these were very good at accessing lots of little bits of information. However, SSDs were very expensive when they were introduced. This also meant they were smaller in size. Apple combined this large hard drive with an SSD and called it a fusion drive. It was, it was supposed to be the storage size of a mechanical drive with the speed of an SSD. In practice, it wasn't much quicker than the mechanical drive. Looking at Wikipedia, I can see that there is a difference between the 2013 and the 2015 iMac uh, when it comes to the Fusion Drive, and that is that the SSD portion in the 2015 model drastically shrunk. The 2013 model had 128 gigs, whereas the 2015 model only had 24 gigs. This meant that the 2013 iMac, the SSD was 12% of the, the total size, whereas in the 2015 iMac, it worked out to be just over 2%, which is no wonder why my 2015 iMac was really slow. Over the years, the SSD prices have come down a lot. And now we're at a stage where Apple is including the SSDs by default, rather than the Fusion Drive. The Fusion Drive is still an option on some iMacs. However, this won't help you if you have an old iMac between 2012 and 2020 that has a Fusion Drive, or even some early Mac Minis. The obvious answer was to replace the mechanical drive with an SSD. This is exactly what I did with my 2013 iMac. It took me and a friend around 90 minutes to complete the process. It was very nerve wracking and there's lots of very thin cables. There was also the extra expense of buying the kit to open up the iMac and be able to seal the screen back up again. But that was a must to do it correctly. What I didn't realise is if you don't seal it up correctly, the fans are able to draw dust in to the screen. And this is a problem with some iMacs that haven't been opened up. So it's, it's not very straightforward to be able to do. This dust is a little bit unsightly, but in the scheme of things, it didn't really bother me. When the time came to open up the 2015 iMac, I really didn't want to have to go through that process again, especially as it had a much more expensive screen. This time I made the decision to try an alternative. The main interfaces we have on an iMac are SATA, Thunderbolt and USB 3. The maximum speed you can get through SATA 3 is 600 megabytes a second. Thunderbolt 2 is 2000 megabytes a second and USB 3 is 625 megabytes per second. I'm not using SATA because that's the internal only. This left me with Thunderbolt or USB. Personally, I've had bad experiences with USB enclosures. It's very easy to get a bad one. And if you do get a bad enclosure, then there's chances are you'll be having data loss. And this is exacerbated if you boot off it. I think I'm biased because I've always ended up buying the cheaper of the enclosures for USB. And I think it's the enclosure that's the problem rather than the interface. I still like the idea of trying to exceed the USB 3 bandwidth and get closer to the Thunderbolt speeds. As luck would have it, I had a MyBook Thunderbolt Duo lying around. This is the Thunderbolt 1 device, which means we won't be getting anywhere near the the 2000 gigabytes a second, it's more like 1000 gigabytes a second. 
it allows you to hook up SATA hard drives to your computer. So we're back to SATA speeds again. But you know what? I was okay with that. As I had a few SSD drives lying around and they could only achieve between 300 and 400 megabytes a second. All I ended up needing was a couple of two and a half inch to three and a half inch uh, adapters. Basically, they're bits of plastic that are shaped like a three and a half inch hard drive that take a two and a half inch hard drive and allow the, the SATA interface to connect up. And I believe they're about $10 each. Opening up the MyBook is actually very straightforward. You just need to unscrew this plate and then pull out the hard drive. It's a lot easier to pull out the hard drive when it's the original mechanical drive. Here's the adapter that I'd put in previously. You can see the silver screws that were originally attached to the hard drive that I've attached to this adapter now. And this will slide back in. Though you do have to be careful that the connector at the bottom lines up because it's very easy for it to miss. Once everything's reassembled, we just need to plug it in and turn it on. I booted up my iMac in recovery mode to reinstall my operating system. I was hoping to be able to raid the two hard drives in this enclosure, but it, bl but it looks like the Apple has disabled that for some reason on external devices, which is a shame because I could have got a bit more speed. Once that was all set up, I then set my external drive to be my boot drive. As part of the installation process, I ended up migrating my internal drive to my external drive. And once everything had copied across nicely, I then formatted my internal drive. This was to make sure that I didn't accidentally boot off the wrong drive and, and save files in the wrong place. You can see that the MyBook is just presenting the SATA interface directly to macOS, so we can see the actual SSD underneath, which is pretty cool. So let's talk performance. Unfortunately, I didn't record how fast the internal hard drive was uh, before I got rid of it, which is a shame. But here is a mechanical hard drive that it's probably slightly more high performance than Apple would have included. Bear in mind, this is reading and writing one contiguous file. The actual performance of using it for an operating system would decrease because of all the little files spread out around. And let's compare this to the new boot volume using the MyDoc. You can see that numbers are a lot better, they're th at least three times faster, sometimes it's four, depending on workload. The performance on this iMac is truly night and day in terms of difference compared to what it was. What I can show you is the performance of the internal SSD component of the Fusion Drive on the 2013 iMac. So potentially I could install my operating system there if I wanted twice the read performance. But you know what, I'm keeping things consistent. It works really well having everything installed on one drive. Nowadays, 300 megabytes a second doesn't sound like a lot. But when I was comparing this to my Fusion Drive, it was phenomenally faster. On the face of it, we were getting about three to four times more speed, but loading little files, which is something I do a lot as a web developer, it was phenomenally faster. It actually breathed new life into this machine. I'd recommend it for anybody. I'll see you in the next video.